So you mentioned that uh, in, in many parts of the world there's a lower infrastructure than others, a lower median uh, income. But you also talked about how there's huge growth opportunities in high GDP in many of these areas. So I just wanted to ask you, as, as an international VC that's on the frontier of this innovation, where do you see many of these opportunities coming from? Can you elaborate your question a little more? So you're saying that we have a GDP growth going on. Right. Uh, and uh, then So I will say that the major growth opportunity will come from the growth of consumers, first of all, right? So you'll be surprised that if you look at human behavior, and I'm sure that there will be someone from psychology department here, is that when you have money, I think you are very much willing to buy a cell phone than you know, thinking about what you will eat tomorrow. We have seen that behavior. So as these people have money, you will think that it, there will be big growth on construction, people will be building their homes, but before they go for homes, I think people want a gadget in their hand. So in some sense, the growth will be coming from the consumers consuming electronic products, and that's where most probably we can make a lot of money as US innovators, right? So that is one area. This can come from areas where, again, to do with your life the way you look, for example, cosmetics can be another area where you can see a lot of growth, right? You can see a lot of growth from apparel industry, like clothing. At the end, I mean, obviously, if you have enough money and if these countries grow to a level, most probably people will be buying cars and houses. So that's where you'll be seeing the growth from. But initially, I think as people have some petty cash in their hand, most probably they will go after these electronic gadgets that we are attracting the whole world with. Um, thanks for the great presentation. Um, but from talking to my uh, colleagues and friends in the venture capital or the startup world, they really echo what you're saying here, that uh, innovation and the ability to actually really see things from a global market. And they will say that, that every time they put together a business plan, they're always challenged to think about like, you know, well, you know, why can't you do this on the in internationally? Why does it have to be done here from what you're saying? At the same time, the U.S. is one of the largest countries who have the richest middle class who not only have money, but they are actually, we are more prone to try innovative products and services because we're the ones who buy the Segways and the Snuggies and whatnot. So how do you balance these two forces? Good. So <laughs> you, you have said the right thing, that when you're talking to VC, they're asking you to go global, right? And you know that U.S. has one of the largest, you know, middle class consumer base and one of the richest middle class, right? Uh, how do you balance these two things out? So my personal take would be innovate in this country because if you're building a business, for example, we are blessed to be in Silicon Valley. I can tell you that if you're building a company in Silicon Valley, you have a higher possibility of being successful than anywhere else in the country. Why? Because you get advice, you get money, you have the infrastructure, you get to see other CEOs how they're doing in their companies, right? So I will say that if you're building a company and you are facing the venture capitalist and they're asking you to go global, you can tell them, okay, stop for a minute and let me grow the company and build the company and build an innovative product first in this country. Once you have some traction, we look into two different types of traction. We either look at user traction or we look at financial traction. I know that as a new product, you might have trouble with financial traction because nobody will buy your product. But hey, today you have social marketing, right? I can see your maybe Facebook fan page and figure out how popular your product is. Or I can look at YouTube and find out how many hits you have. So please try to show the user traction. If your idea is innovative and unique, I'm sure that you can show or prove through some social traction. Once you have that, then obviously I'm sure that venture capitalists will be convinced to put money in your product, and that's where you can have the first step. Once you actually make to a certain level of revenue in this country, then you can think of growing global, and at that time I will recommend that you build some partnership through maybe some of the 
foreign investors and foreign incubators. For example, if you work with me, most probably I will give you some money to actually build and nurture your product in this country first. And then when you are ready and you have for example, a few million dollars in revenue, I will introduce you to some of my friend maybe in China and that is how you can grow. So, you need to work with the right venture capitalist, you need to work with the right people who can actually hold your hand and take you there. Okay, we'll do one more question. Okay, I'll ask a question. Uh, Anis, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have no short questions. I know we talked about this last Friday, but when, when uh, you start thinking about, you know, a VC and you have a company, you have an idea, you know, there's a, there's a lot of hawkish individuals who, you know, maybe want to give you some money, but really just want to take your idea. How do, how do you build that trust when you're looking for a VC and how do you make sure that you found the right fit for your company? idea. Okay, I think you asked me two questions is that if you have an idea and you come to me, I might steal your idea, right? <laughs> That's one question, right? And second is how you build um, trust. trust, yes. That is one great thing. Um, so, last year itself in one year as Phenox, our team, we looked at 8000 companies and we ran due diligence on 380 and we actually invested as of today 11, 10 or 11, let us consider that. So, we actually invested one out of every 800 companies. So, that is a tough, tough call, but we have also seen companies where someone actually saw a dream last night and came out and said that, hey Anis, I saw a dream and you have to invest in my dream, all right. So, we do not invest in the, into the dreamers in a dream. So, um, when I am looking at 8000 companies, I doubt I have any time left in my calendar to actually copy your product, okay. That is the case for most of the venture capitalists. So, when you are going to a venture capitalist, you should be less worried about your idea and technology being stolen. So, do not worry about that. That is the last thing you want to worry about. Now, I will tell you another, I will give you another advice that if you are worried about that, that your patent or your IP is going to get stolen and if you are saying that to a venture capitalist, most probably they do not have enough time in their calendar to sign an NDA with you and look into your product. So, most probably you will end up not getting any funding at all at the end of the day, even if your technology is, is like the next Facebook or Google. So, that is one thing, okay. To build the trust. So, you might have heard about a new concept called lean startup model. Have you heard that? Many of you? So, let me tell you. Nowadays, if you look at how the startups are getting built, they are following a concept called lean startup model, where you take a little bit of money, you have an idea, you take a little bit of money from a venture capitalist, you grow the product a little bit and then you put it in the market to get the user feedback. You get the user feedback you fix your product or repair or enhance your product and you release back again. So, every single time you are getting a feedback, you are coming back, you are taking money from venture capitalists little by little. So, this is called the lean startup model. This protects you from over developing your product, spending over resource and money for your product. This is a concept, this is another American icon concept and you cannot believe Eric Ross, uh, he is actually 32 years old only from Silicon Valley, he actually created this concept or I am sure that this concept was in practice in America, he put it all together as defined. Now, what is happening is with this concept, people are most of the entrepreneurs and I am sure that many of you have startups here, they are trying to get little money from VCs. So, they are not going after this big brand name VCs anymore they are going after VCs who can help them with advice. So, that is where Phenox, we our venture capital, we are that type of VC. So, every single investment we have done, you can go to our website and go to our top page, we have worked with the entrepreneur, we have got close to them, we have come down to the level they want us to discuss things with them. So, this is money plus advice equal to smart money that is what we believe in and that is where the VC industry is moving towards. So, you can create a VC and create a brand name today, 
by dealing with these entrepreneurs who are ready to discuss and expand their business based on mutual ideas. So it is a team working together rather than you being a VC in the traditional model, give the money and say like, I'll see you after two months for 10 minutes. That is changing and I think Phenox as our team also, we are kind of the leading VCs in Silicon Valley who are trying to change this. Make sense? Once again, Anise, thank you so much for uh, joining us here this evening, and thank you everyone for attending. Camille, uh, next week's speaker will be having. Next week we're having a software developer So if you're able to join us next week, we would be happy to have you here, same time, same place. Anise, once again, thank you. Everyone give a round of applause. For thank you very much.